I remember, of course, when you joined us, when you announced this deal uh, at the beginning, you had this option, but it had quite some time to run. Why exercise the option now? Well, you know, that's a great question, David. Uh, but certainly the market conditions where we find them today are in, in great shape. Big River Steel just completed phase 2A of uh, their expansion, doubling capacity, um, ahead of schedule and under budget. And the combination of the, uh, the market tailwinds along with the superior performance that we're seeing out of Big River Steel, we thought, let's get after a relatively short engagement the last year, let's go ahead and get married and uh, bring the, the EBITDA to the bottom line for this uh, much better, uh, best of both integrated and mini mill organization. You know, I'm curious, what percentage of your overall production, once they are wholly owned, will be coming out of their mills as opposed to what were, let's call it legacy or, or current mills uh, uh, of your own? Well, uh, our... Um, uh, capacity is at 22 million tons, including our European and tubular operations. They have 3.3 million tons, uh, net tons of, of capacity. So they're going to be an important part of our business. And uh, what they bring to the table is this uh, high-tech, uh, only leads certified uh, steel company in the world that we know of. And combining that uh, mini-mill nimbleness and artificial intelligence with uh, R&D and product development know-how that U.S. Steel has, we think is an absolute uh, great combination, what we refer to as the best of the mini mills, best of the integrated mills. And at some point in time, we like to think we can be best of all steel. David, it's Morgan. Um, congratulations on, on this deal. I, I'm curious, given the fact that uh, it is so productive, it is high tech, I would imagine lower costs uh, associated with this as well. The timing with the Biden administration coming in next month, how much did that impact the timing of this deal? And also, in general, what is your expectation? What is your outlook for this industry under this new administration? Well, I think we've been very pleased. Uh, the focus that President Trump provided for steel, and and now we we actually uh, are excited by President-elect Biden and the things that he said about uh, uh, what his expectations are for the future. And you know, we've been around for uh, nearly 120 years, and so we feel really comfortable with whoever we should uh, work with. But I'd say this: uh, it was clearly a, a, an economic decision. It was clearly an integration decision. The timing, uh, a lot of things have to come together in this pandemic uh, year to see uh, strong um, expectations for the future. You know, you, you just look at the, the world, right? Low interest rates, low inflation, a weak dollar. Um, you, you, the Fed has done an incredible job with M1, the money supply. It seems that there will be some type of stimulus in the offing and, and uh at some point in time, we will get an infrastructure bill. And so we feel extraordinarily optimistic, dare I say bullish, about uh, where we are today heading into the future. And we look forward to working with the, the current administration who understands very well that uh, we create some great jobs, great represented employee uh, positions here in, in the United States. And also we've learned from the pandemic that you have to have a resilient supply chain. And I'm, I'm certain that uh, uh, President-elect Biden understands that and how vital steel uh, the industry is to the United States of America. It sure would be great to get some sort of infrastructure deal, especially since I think we've been talking about it for so many years now. Um, those Section 232 tariffs, what is your expectation around those? Do you expect those to stay in place? And now that we're a couple years out from when they were first imposed, have they worked? I'd say yes, they have worked, and I and I do think they'll stay in place for a while. Obviously, these are the kind of things that aren't forever. But clearly, with a trans shipping and the illegal steel that was coming across, you know, there had to be some things done. You know, you think back in 2012, U.S. Steel had its advanced high strength steel uh, secrets stolen at that point in time, and certainly since that time, there's been a, a lot more focus on China, a lot more focus on fair trade so that we actually get a level playing field, as we always say. And I think everybody in the steel industry will say this. We can compete with anybody outside the U.S. if we're given a level playing field. And I fully expect President-elect Biden to, to help us do that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.